Hey YouTube, welcome to a video where I'm going to be talking about my experience using Claude AI to write uh, detailed and effective code uh, and a lot of the lessons I've learned along the way, uh, in particular how I think you can structure your projects and your code base slightly differently in order to get better results. Now this is particularly for situations where you are trying to write um, code that is more detailed than just a very simple application. Uh, where there's a lot of uh, interrelated dependencies uh, and different files and that kind of thing. So what I've got on the screen at the moment is what I would consider a fairly typical structure for a Node.js application or backend using uh, Express. Now, I will say that I've kind of simplified this a little bit and also I'll put up my hand and say, look, while I know how to code both on the front end and the back end, I've never worked as a full-time developer. Um, so yeah, just take keep that in mind, but uh, I, I've been coding for a number of years now uh, and I've been using AI, if you've seen my past videos, to pretty much try and create a new application from scratch using AI 90, 95% of the way. And kind of going through the last few weeks, uh, process of doing this, I've noticed how AI understands the code base and some of the challenges that it has, and that's made me change my work structure and how I uh, structure applications as well so that it can be better, especially when it comes to writing jest tests and also when it comes to just writing the code and making it work straight off the bat. In a follow-up video, I'll also provide some insight in terms of how I prompt Claude to write better tests, uh, sorry, better applications, so keep an eye out for that as well. But to start with, what we've got on the left-hand side is if you're used to using Node.js and Express, uh, a lot of people have a routes file, sorry, a routes folder, a controllers, a services, a utils, middleware, validations, and a test folder. Now, in this particular example, we're talking about a task application, like, you know, uh, creating tasks, just for simplicity's sake. Now, obviously, you're always going to have to have files like app.js or server.js um, to start your server and uh, call all of the functions that are required to actually get the application running. Uh, and then normally it's compartmentalized like this. Now, as you add more routes, uh, say for example, instead of tasks, uh, you now have, uh, you know, like a projects, you would add this in here, projects.routes.js. Uh, and you can imagine that over time, there's going to be quite a lot of different files in there. Now, if we kind of visualize what this looks like, it'll help understand why uh, Claude uh, and other AI tools in particular may start to get a little bit confused along the way especially when you start adding additional functionality. So we obviously have our user request, uh, so they might be uh, making a call to our get tasks route. Uh, and first of all, we're going to check with some middleware, uh, which you can see here, obviously, is are they authenticated? You know, yes, no, and then based on whether or not they're authenticated, uh, we then continue on the journey. We might have some validation chains that sit between the routes and the controller, so we might then come down here and call that functionality before getting to our controller, which in turn calls our services or the business logic, uh, and then that kind of passes the result all the way uh, back up the chain. Now, along the way, we might also have a situation where we throw some errors. This might be checking when we're authenticated. So we might throw an error here. We might throw an error from the controller. We might throw an error from the validation chain. We might throw an error from the services. Uh, we might even throw uh, an error from uh, this utility, which is a notification service. So maybe uh, in this application, uh, when you get notes, um, I know it sends an update, an email update or something, just for simplicity's sake. So you can see that with this complexity, if we then have a bug in our code uh, and we say to uh, Claude, can you go and fix that bug? And that bug might be in the services file. While you can define the project knowledge in Claude, um, it can sometimes lose its contextual awareness of everything else that's happening across the application. Even more so when you're using ChatGPT uh, because it doesn't have that same kind of projects set up. Now, in addition to that, what we found, or what I found, is when you then go, okay, I've got my functionality working. I want to add a test file. This test file needs to be Vertically, it needs to understand all of this entire code base uh, in order to write tests effectively, especially if you're not just doing unit tests. Because, for example, uh, we've run into some issues in my previous videos where we might have been trying to run a test to get all tasks, but there was some issue in auth that was causing an issue, right? Um, actually, that's a bad example. There, there might be an error that is thrown, and the error middleware um, is leveraging another file, like our error types, which is structuring the response error response slightly differently to how our test application expects it. And because Je uh, because Claude is trying to keep track of all these different files in all these different places and kind of struggles to understand at times the relationship between them, it starts going down a rabbit hole uh, and doesn't actually solve the issue as easily and as quickly as I believe it could. Now, does it eventually get there? Yes, most of the time it does, uh, but not always. So what I've then learned to do in my project is instead do this flatter structure. And now, there's, there's a couple of things that you need to consider when you take this approach. First of all, there is some downside in that you need to write a little bit more code and there's going to be some duplication of effort because everything is very compartmentalized. So in this instance, you can see we've got a components folder and we've got our get tasks capability. 
So here we have get task route, get task controller, services, utils, validation chains, and our test file. So if there is a util, we specifically want to put it in the get task.utils, even if that utility could potentially be used by another component later on. So that's largely where you get the duplication of effort. Now, if we, for example, wanted to create some new functionality, let's just say add task, we would do the same here. We would now create add tasks, oh, add task.route.js, add task.controller.js, etc., etc. Now, if you contrast that to this structure, instead what we, get, we would have is these individual files in these individual um, well, actually, you might not even have individual files. You might have all of the get task functionality in just a common task route, but assuming you didn't do that, you're going to at least, at the very least, have uh, functionality that looks like this. Um, sorry, not get tasks. This is meant to be add tasks. Add tasks, uh, add tasks dot controller dot JS. So as these kind of balloon out over time, you can imagine that either A, you're going to have a lot of routes and a lot of functionality in each kind of one here. So for example, the task. Uh, or you're going to end up with a lot of files within this folder that Claude may or may not need to be aware of in order to solve the issue. So going with this flatter approach, as I said, it does require a little bit more effort. It does require a little bit more duplication, particularly in the utils folder and also for validation chains, especially if you're validating things like email passwords on sign up or login. It would make traditionally more sense to have a common uh, validation chains to check the email format, for example, but we break it down and we compartmentalize it so that it's all within this one components folder. What this translates to is a much flatter, what I call flatter structure, where we have our user request, we have our route that calls our validation change, which calls our controller, which calls our service, which may leverage a utility, uh, and then obviously the response gets passed all the way back to the user. Now, we can't avoid some middleware, for example, our authentication and our error handling middleware, but the structure is streamlined. And then instead of having to have this like vertical kind of test, be aware of all of this functionality. Instead, what we have is a much flatter approach to being able to test. And then when it comes to Claude, or even ChatGPT, if we uh, go to Claude here and look at our knowledge bank, yes, we can upload all of the files for our entire project. But if we want to write a particular test, or we want to write a particular uh, new piece of functionality even, what, what we can be very specific is telling Claude, here's the, sub, here's the subfolder, and here are the exact files, right? or in the test case, here are the exact files that are relevant to the task that I'm asking you to complete. And it's much easier when they're in this kind of subfolder to be able to quickly and easily say, this is everything that's relevant. And by the way, don't forget that we do have some middleware or some global utilities that you just can't avoid uh, that are going to sit here. And we certainly have some global utilities in our auth uh, backend project. For example, uh, you know, we've got this logger functionality, we've got our error types, uh, and we've got the uh, app error as well. So there is still going to be some, but it is much more condensed. And if you're not convinced of uh, this approach, uh, there's two, pre two or three previous videos that will be published before this, where I prompt Claude uh, to go and create new functionality. Uh, and the functionality we were creating in that video is uh, da -da -da. Um, our add note, add source, and get notes. And if you compare how quickly and easily Claude is able to A, create that functionality, B, do it without any errors, and C, uh, maintain the consistency of how we want to approach creating code, and then also D, go and create tests for that, you'll see it is much, much, much quicker uh, than you know taking this more traditional approach where everything is kind of a little bit more broken up and um, not as logically sequenced for AI's understanding. So I hope that was helpful. This is just a lesson that I've learned. I'd really be um, open to hearing from other people who've used uh, Claude or ChatGPT extensively in their coding to see if uh, they've considered an approach like this or what other things you've used uh, and tried to make AI understand your code base more effectively. Uh, and in a follow-up video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a little bit more detail in terms of how I go about writing these prompts uh, and why I believe these prompts have helped uh, Claude, in this case, uh, write code that is much more, um, well, much more likely to work just straight off the bat. Anyway, thanks for watching. Comment down below and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.